Hey there, this is Andrew, and today we're going to be taking some time to create a simple Photosphere project. This project is primarily going to be for Oculus, however you can take some of the concepts that we're going to be learning and apply it to pretty much any VR project. And in this series, we're naturally going to be going over 360 photos, we'll be covering some basic interface and input, and then manipulating Unity Skybox so we can switch between each of our photos and apply a different piece of audio when we switch the photo. And in this video, we're going to be tackling our basic photosphere as well as creating the basics of our input and our environment library. And our environment library is basically going to be a holder for all of the little objects that we're going to be using for each of our environments. So it'll have the world rotation that we want it to be at, the background image itself, as well as the ambient noise. So enough of the intro, let's go ahead and let's get started. And the first thing that we're going to be doing is creating the material that we're going to be applying to our skybox. So the first thing that we're going to be doing is creating our skybox material. So if we go to our material folder, well, I guess I'll go ahead and also say that I've imported the Oculus plugin into my project and I have a few textures that I've already got off the internet. I'm going to go over those and how to import them and fix a few things once we get them into the scene. So don't worry about that too much right now. So we'll right click, we'll go to create material and we'll just call it M underscore environment. We'll go to our shader, and then we'll want to go to skybox and panoramic. And we have a few parameters here that we can play with, such as the tint color, the exposure, the rotation, as well as the actual texture itself. And these are the textures that I'm going to be using for my project. They're pretty simple. They're either going to be 2048 by 1024, and I believe I have some 4K ones in here as well. Well, no, I actually don't. I lied. <laughs> But these are just free spherical photographs that I found online. You can just go to Google and type in free 360 photos and you'll probably find some that you would be able to use in your project, but you most likely have your own if you're following this. So we'll start with this bridge one for our default. So I'll select my material, drag our texture onto it, and then we can actually click and look around here. And you can actually already see before we even get it into the scene that there's this seam here, which we'll be fixing in just a second. But if we want to see it in our actual scene, we'll go to our lighting tab and we'll just apply it to our skybox material. And now we can actually look around our scene. And you can see even in the scene, we have this little seam here. So let's fix that. So if we go back to our inspector, let's select all of these textures. And I think I'll need to set the max size to 4K so we can get the full resolution of them, which that actually gave us a pretty significant difference in overall quality. And then we just need to disable the generation of the emit maps and we'll apply that as well. And now that's fixed our seam issue. We can actually play it right now and be able to look around the scene if we hold control. So let's test it out really quick. So with just the OVR camera rig within my scene, I can hold control and I can actually look around my 360 photo. And then once you release control, it'll usually auto recenter to what it was previously. And now with that done, let's create the two scripts we're going to be working on in this video. The first one is going to be our environment library. And then the second one is going to be our input. And now we'll just add them to the scene really quick because I know I'm probably going to forget it later. Reset the transform on both of those and then we'll just attach our scripts. All right, so that looks good. Let's open these up in Visual Studio. All right, so here we are in our environment library script where we're just basically going to be creating a simple class as well as a list so we can store all of the assets that we're going to be using for each of our scenes or each of our environments. So we can get rid of these two events here. And we'll actually, we'll need that, but we'll remove the collections off of the system because we're going to need to serialize the class we're going to make. So the first thing that we're going to be doing is creating a little container for all of our assets. So we'll start with a public class and we'll just call it environment. Okay. 
And we're doing this because sometimes when you put these 360 photos into your project, they're not going to be oriented exactly how you want them when they're added into your scene. So we're going to be editing the default world rotation. So when it pops up, they have a really good view and they're not looking at a weird hill or something like that, that they'll be looking at the focal point that we want them to be looking at. So we'll just call this world rotation. We'll initialize it to zero. We'll be adding a public texture. That we'll just be calling background. And then we'll be adding a audio clip if we want to have any ambient noise based on what kind of environment we're in. And it actually adds a decent level of immersion as simple as it is. So it'll be a public audio clip that we'll call ambient noise. And that's that. And now we'll just create a public list that we'll be calling environments. And it'll be a list of environments, obviously. And we'll initialize that to null. And we'll just add all of this to the inspector. Now, naturally, if you want to make this private and make it a serialized field and have a getter and setter, you can set all that up. Obviously, you probably don't need to watch me type all that out. If you want to add that, you're more than welcome to. One thing to note about this environment class is we may come back to it to add a sprite for a thumbnail. But we may not need to do that if we don't want to. So that's actually all we need for our environment library. Now we need to set up some basic input with some Unity events so we can cycle through each of our photospheres. So let's go to our player input script. And we'll actually need our update, so we'll leave that. And we'll be creating four events for our touch start end and our touchpad. But before we do that, we'll need to add the Unity events namespace. And the first event we're going to have is an on touch start. And this is basically for when the user is going to be pressing down on the touchpad. The way we're going to be using our navigation is based on where they where they release their finger on the touchpad. So it's going to if it's going to be more to the left, it's going to cycle to the left and if it's going to be more to the right when they release, it's going to cycle to the right photosphere. And it's a pretty simple sort of cycling mechanic that we don't need a pointer for. So we'll be creating a Unity event. We'll just call it on touch start. We'll initialize that to a Unity event. And we'll copy this. And we'll have it on touch end. I think it'll be beneficial to just copy this to these other two as well. So this is going to be just a generic sort of touchpad touch and release. And then we'll need it for our left and our right. So we'll be calling this touchpad left up. And then touchpad right up. We don't need, we don't really need to check for the down state, so we're not going to write all of that out. And then we'll just add a private to our update because I'm weird like that. And we're going to be adding a little function here just to test for our Oculus input. And there we go. And I know I'm going to forget this, so let's call our Oculus input with an update. And I'm doing this because we're also going to be creating a function for keyboard input so we can test it easier in editor. And we're doing this now because I know I'm going to forget later. So first thing that we're going to be tackling is our touch, then our left press, and then our right press. So it's going to be if OBR input, get down, OBR input, touch and we'll be using our primary touchpad and then we just need to do a null check for our event be on touch start is not equal to null and then we'll just invoke that event and there we go and then we can copy this for our upstate So we'll change that 
Obtain change on touch start to on touch end, and then we'll make sure we're invoking the right event. Now let's scroll down here. And like I mentioned before, we're going to be needing to test for where the thumb is on the touchpad to know whether we're going to want to cycle to the left or cycle to the right. So let's handle that here. So we'll be creating a vector two that we'll be calling touch position. And we'll be sending that to our OVR input. Get be our OVR inputs dot axis 2D. And then it'll be our primary touchpad. And we should still have that piece that I copied earlier, which we do. So we'll just add that here so I don't have to type most of this out again. So for our left press, we're going to change this to get up. And since this is going to be our left press, we need to check to see if our touch position, the X value, is going to be less than 0 0.5. Because 0 0.5 off for the X value as well as the Y is basically going to be in the center of the touchpad. So we'll have our double ampersand. And we'll write our touch position dot X. We want to make sure it is less than 0 0.5 F. And now let's update this event. So it'll be our touchpad left up. Then we'll invoke that. And now we'll be doing primarily the same thing for our right press. It'll be our touch position dot X. But this time we need to check if it's going to be greater than or equal to our 0 0.5. And then we just need to change our event. And that does it for our Oculus input. I'm actually going to copy and paste over the keyboard input for playtesting. Naturally, you don't have to do this, so if you don't want to type this out, you don't have to, and it's easier for everyone, I think. So let's scroll up here, and we'll create a new function just called keyboard input. And I'll copy this over, and it's pretty simple get it all into view here. So within our keyboard input, we're just going to be using the space for our touch start and our touch end. And then we'll be using the arrow keys for our touchpad left up and our touchpad right up. So it's all pretty simple. And like I said, you don't have to copy this down and use this, but I'll be using it throughout the video so we can do some more incremental testing. And then we'll be making a call to it in our update. And we'll just be saying keyboard input. And we're just going to be adding some simple compiler ifs to only check for our keyboard input when we're in the Unity editor and our Oculus input when we're on Android, since the Oculus Go runs on an Android system. We'll start with our Oculus input and we'll do if Unity underscore Android. We will in that one and then we'll add another one for if it's the Unity editor. And that about does it for our player input. And I actually just remembered I forgot to serialize that class with our environment library. So let's do that really quick. And since we have the system namespace up at the top, we just need to write serializable. And this lets us see this class within the inspector. So that's all the programming we're going to be doing for this video. So let's go back into Unity so we can set up the assets in our environment library. All right, so let's select our environment library. We'll expand our list here and we'll set the size to four. And you'll see that we have all these fields for each of the pieces of information. And what I'm gonna do here is just drag each of my textures into my background. And I don't have any audio clips in my project just yet, so we'll leave those empty. And then we'll focus on the road rotation when, once we start to cycle through each of our environments. And I think that about is it for this video. In the next one, we're going to be focusing on a controller for our skybox and maybe building the basics of our interface. But hopefully you found this useful. If you need any help or have any problems, feel free to leave a comment below and I'll see you in the next one.